Sarah Albad, we here from Horse Racing Nation with another week of the Outrun the Odds video segment where I talk about horses that I think have a good chance to outrun their odds, just like my Twitter handle suggests, and possibly hit the board at a price, round out some of those exotics, or possibly even win and shake things up as well. And the three races that I'm going to be talking about this week are all over the place, but we'll start at Keeneland in one of the last, if not the last, grade one event until the Breeders' Cup, and that's going to be the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup stake. This is race number nine on Saturday at Keeneland. We're going a mile and an eighth on the turf. And this is for the three-year-old Phillies. The field came up a little bit differently than I think some of us expected with Spenderella, uh, who would have been the likely favorite in here, not being a part of this field. But there is a very generous price on the number one horse, and that is California Angel. She's listed at 15 to one on the morning line partially due to the presence of two very live Chad Brown horses in this race, a trainer that's won this race many, many times, the more so than any other trainer. I think he's at four total wins um, and three of the last four going to him as well. But California Angel is a horse that is extremely consistent and on debut at Kentucky Downs as a two-year-old, she won that race at 28 to one. She returned to the turf uh, in her third start and upset the grade two Jessamine last year here at Keeneland at 17 to one, closing from way far back. And you can see her from post two. She has the white blinkers on, just getting up for the win in there. Already having a win over this specific course is definitely to her advantage. And she is the only one in this field with that to her credit. If you toss the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf and the race is on the wrong surface, you're left with nothing but efforts where she hits the board at a price, and I'm hoping that that trend continues in this spot. She was off from March to September and returned off that freshening with a solid third from post 11 in the Dueling Grounds Oaks at 13 to 1 at Kentucky Downs, the site of her maiden victory. Jockey Rafael Bejarano is getting back aboard, who was on for all of her races as a two-year-old, and she can absolutely outrun the odds once again to shake things up in the trifecta or superfecta. For more in-depth analysis on this entire race, you can check out the video that I did with my colleague Ed DeRosa as we go through the entire field for this Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup stakes. And that is available, of course, on our Horse Racing Nation YouTube page. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and th turn those notifications on to be notified of all of the upcoming content that we have, especially with the Breeders' Cup approaching so quickly. The next race that I want to talk about is actually the finale at Belmont at the Big A on Saturday, and that is going to be race number 10, an allowance race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. We're going six furlongs on the outer turf, and the horse that I want to highlight in this spot is the number three, Fontana Freda, who is 12 to one on the morning line. Now, this is a horse that has been in really great form as of late, especially with her last three races, and if we go back to her race three back on July 29th at Saratoga. She broke from post 12 that day and really just started picking horses off one by one, going wide and sustaining that bid, even though she kind of wanted to lug in a bit in the stretch. She was able to get the victory that day at 14 to one. And then not surprisingly, she was then a much shorter price next time out where she was the number five horse. She was making a similar looking move in that race when you can tell that the horse to her inside was trying to move out for clear sailing something that's much more clearly seen in the head on here. Now, last time out, she broke from post six, sat a little bit closer to the pace than what we saw from her previous two efforts. And she was able to um, sit that trip pouncing to the outside and wearing down that pace setter towering orbit. She also kind of kept Jill's a hot mess in just tight enough quarters going today's six for long distance right here at Belmont at the big A to make sure that that one didn't totally get a clear run up until the very late stages of the race. Jill's a hot mess is a horse that we'll see earlier on in the card too, who is also in great form as of late. I'm just hoping that her consistent run continues and that she's overlooked in the wagering as I see several horses that are likely to take more money in here that I don't really have a big interest in betting on myself. We'll go out to California at Santa Anita for the last race that I want to talk about. And this one is actually a part of that Rainbow Six mandatory payout that's happening from race five on. In race number six, there's a horse that I really like trying the turf for the first time. And that's going to be the number seven, Icy Flavor, who is 10 to one on the morning line. Now, the pedigree for this one does suggest that she'll appreciate the surface switch as she is a half sibling to not far now. So I'm hoping that this one switching surfaces can replicate that sibling success in going to the front early in those turf sprints. 
This horse is also putting the blinkers on, getting a trainer change. And I think that this one could possibly uh, upset at a little bit of a price because there's other horses that I think will attract more of the wagering attention. Uh, there's two Peter Miller horses to the outside. There's another horse uh, trying the turf for the first time for Doug O'Neill in the number two, you are pressed. Even um, horses like the number four, who is a first time starter rates very highly on our first timer power ratings for horse racing nation. Uh, when I talked about this race with Gina Bacola, another video that you can watch for our full analysis of the sequence. He really liked the number five facetious. So there's a lot of different directions to go in this race. And I would like to go with a horse that's had less chances to lose that is supposed to move up when switching surfaces to the turf. And that's the number seven icy flavor. Thanks for watching.